There's very little pigment remaining on these reliefs and we're trying to track down a particular pigment which is called the Egyptian blue. It's a very important pigment that was used throughout antiquity and it has very special optical properties that we're exploiting in this technique which is called visible induced infrared luminescence. These reliefs would have stood in the palace of, of the king. The larger goal of the project is to reconstruct the color of these palatial spaces. Now these reliefs would have stood underneath wall paintings. The ceilings would have been painted, the columns would have been painted, the floor would have been painted. Try to imagine what these palatial spaces looked like in color because color is an important cultural signifier. These Assyrian reliefs were discovered around um, 1840 by the British and in fact at the time of the excavations um, it was not unusual to have an artist as part of the team and record and document through drawings and watercolors um, what was found and in, in an interpretation of the palace at that time and in fact um, we have at Yale collections of these drawings and watercolors which makes it even a richer resource. A scientist at the British Museum, Giovanni Berry, he pioneered visible induced infrared luminescence as a tool to spatially map the remaining pigment grains of Egyptian blue on these reliefs. So we can zoom in on a detail so we can focus all the light we have on the area and in this case more is more. The more light you have the more signal you get and the more easily and the Egyptian blue is detected. The effect is very very strong so even single grains of Egyptian blue pigment we can detect with this technique. The Egyptian blue will show up as bright white while everything else will be more or less dark in the image. Blue was a rare color in ancient times in general. It was really hard to make blue because there weren't many uh, natural resources for them to take this out of plants compared to let's say red or yellow pigments. So the Assyrians actually were very interested in trying to manipulate pigments and create blue and it became a prestige color for the Assyrians and especially with the prestige symbols in the Assyrian landscape which were the palaces. I find it quite amazing that there are any traces of pigments on these ancient ancient reliefs um, considering that they're nearly 3,000 years old and at the time of excavation it was not uncommon for archaeologists to actually scrape off polychromy in order to better read the inscriptions and the carving. So the fact that we have some pigment remaining that you can see with the naked eye is terrific, but the fact that we now have a new technique for looking at traces of Egyptian blue provides us with even more information and we actually can kind of rediscover what the polychromy would have looked like in antiquity. Our findings have confirmed some of the things that I've read about. The beard of um, the figure standing behind me has blue and a blue beard is sort of a metaphor in the ancient world because the blue had a luminescent quality to it and since beards were associated with masculinity and virility it makes perfect sense that the king would have a bluish black beard. An amazing and very important aspect of this technique is that it's totally non-destructive. In other words, we can look uh, through the camera and the computer provides the images that tell us whether or not Egyptian blue is present or not. We don't actually have to take samples to confirm this. So um, obviously as a conservator I prefer to have techniques used on our antiquities and all our works of art that are as uh, non-destructive as possible kind of like an archaeological dig. You look everywhere and then sometimes you find something, sometimes you don't.